Hey everyone, and welcome. Today we're tackling a leak code problem called Find the Original Typed String 2. The name sounds a little intense, but don't worry, we'll break it down together. The basic idea involves a character named Alice, who is a bit clumsy when she types, and we need to figure out what she might have been trying to type originally. Let's get into it. So here's the setup. We're given a string, which is the final result we see on the screen, like A A A B B C. We're also given a number, let's call it K Froltz. The story is that when Alice types a character, she might accidentally hold the key down too long, resulting in extra letters. For example, if she wanted to type ABC, she might end up with AAABC or ABBC. Our job is to count how many possible original strings could have resulted in the given final string, with one very important condition. The original string's length must be at least K. Let's walk through an example to make this concrete. The input word is A. A, B, B, C, C, D, D, and K is 7. First, it's easier to think about this in terms of groups of identical characters. So we have a group of two A's, a group of two B's, two C's, and two D's. For the first group of two A's, Alice could have meant to type just one A, or she could have meant to type two A's, that's two choices. The same logic applies to the B's, C's, and D's. We need to pick one choice from each group add up their lengths, and see if the total is 7 or more. For instance, if she intended to type 1A, 2Bs, 2Cs and 2Ds, the total length would be 1, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, which equals 7. Since 7 is at least 7, that's one valid possibility. Our goal is to count all such valid combinations. So the real challenge here is counting all these combinations that add up to at least caprips. Just trying every single combination one by one would be far too slow, especially if the word is long. There's a classic problem-solving technique for situations like this. When you need to count things that are at least some value, it's often easier to flip the problem around. Instead of counting what we want, let's count everything possible, and then subtract the things we don't want. In our case, the things we don't want are the original strings that have a total length less than k's. This problem of counting combinations to reach a certain sum is a perfect fit for a technique called dynamic programming. Let's imagine building a solution step by step. We can keep track of how many ways there are to form an original string of a specific length, say j. We'll start with an empty set of character groups, and then add one group at a time, updating our counts at each step. Our ultimate goal is to use this method to find the total number of ways to create strings of any length from zero all the way up to k minus one. These are our unwanted cases. Okay, here's the full Python solution we'll be breaking down. It follows the exact strategy we just discussed. It starts by grouping characters, finds the total possible ways, and then uses dynamic programming to figure out how many of those ways result in a string that's too short. Let's dive into the details. First, the code processes the input string. It iterates through the word to find consecutive blocks of identical characters, and it stores the size of each block in a list we're calling frec. Next, it calculates the absolute total number of possible strings Alice could have intended, without any length restrictions. For each group of say p identical characters she had p choices, so we just multiply the sizes of all the groups together to get our initial total, which we're calling ands. Now, here's a very clever optimization. The code checks if the number of character groups is greater than or equal to k fan. If it is, we can stop right here and just return the total answer. Why? Well, to form any original string, we have to pick at least one character from each group. If we have k or more groups, the shortest possible string we can make will have a length of at least k. This means every single combination is valid, so we don't need to do any more work. It's a great little shortcut. Okay, if we can't exit early, we set up our dynamic programming arrays. f will track the number of ways to get a certain length, and g will be its prefix sum helper. We initialize f to be a 1, followed by a bunch of zeros. This represents our starting point, before we've considered any character groups. It says there is exactly one way to form a string of length 0, the empty string, and 0 ways to form any other length. The G array is then initialized as the prefix sum of f, which is just an array of all ones. This sets up our helper array for the first step of the main loop. This is the core of our calculation. We loop through each character group we found earlier. In each step, we calculate a dacetake underscore new array which will be the updated counts after considering the current group. To find the number of ways to get a new length j, we use our prefix sum trick. We look at the g array, which holds the prefix sums from the previous step, and perform a quick subtraction. 
This efficiently sums up all the ways from the previous step that could lead to our current state. After calculating the new f underscore new, we update g to be its prefix sum, getting it ready for the next iteration. And finally, after the loop has processed all the character groups, the last element of our prefix sum array, g at index k1, holds the answer we need. It represents the total number of ways to form strings with a length from 0 up to k minus 1. These are all the unwanted combinations. So, we take our absolute total, ands, subtract this count of unwanted ways, and that gives us our final answer. The modulo operations are there to keep the numbers within the required range. So, how efficient is our solution? The initial grouping of characters takes time proportional to the length of the word, which we can call nice. The main dynamic programming part involves a loop for each of the m character groups, and inside that, a loop that runs up to k times. This gives us a total time complexity of big O, of n plus m times k times tams. For memory, or space complexity, we only need our f and g arrays, which are both of size k times. This means our space usage is big O of k fron, which is very efficient. Alright, let's do a quick recap. The first key idea was to simplify the problem by grouping consecutive characters. The second big strategy was to reframe the question. Instead of counting what we want, we counted everything and subtracted what we didn't want. For the dynamic programming part, the trick was to start with a base case representing the empty string, and then build up our solution one character group at a time. And to make it fast we used a prefix sum array to turn slow repetitive additions into a single, quick subtraction. Hope that breakdown made sense. If it helped you understand the problem better, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe for more tutorials, or drop a comment if you have any questions. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll catch you in the next one.